Tony and I have taught and played all over the country. And every time we step on the courts, we see players making these same mistakes. So let's start with what I like to call the number one offender. And it has to do with the non-volley zone, that you can't step into the non-volley zone until the ball has bounced. Not true. Now, I do know this, the non-volley zone causes more confusion probably than anywhere on the court. So if you're not really sure what to do in the non-volley zone, I'm going to link to a video right here and it talks all about the rules of the non-volley zone. Let's define two of the terms that cause misconceptions. The first one is a volley. So go ahead, Lori, hit me a volley. A volley is a ball that's hit out of the air. I am not allowing that ball to bounce. So that's a volley. Now, when I'm up here at the non-volley zone, a ball that bounces, we typically call it a dink, but if you look in the rule book, it's actually defined as a ground stroke. That's a ball that's allowed to bounce. So those are the two terms that we wanna make sure that we have a definition for. Rule 9E says that a player may enter the non-volley zone at any time other than volleying a ball. So, I mean, if I'm here with Lori, I can come in here and I can dink with her. I can stand in the non-volley zone. I never have to leave the non-volley zone. There's nothing in the rules that tells me when I have to go in the non-volley zone or when I can go in the non-volley zone and when I have to leave the non-volley zone. From a strategic standpoint, it's not a good idea to stay in the non-volley zone. If I'm here and I'm dinking with Lori, we're dinking, what she's gonna do is hit me a volley. So she's gonna hit a ball that I have to hit a volley. And the minute I hit the volley, I have now committed a fault. But I don't have to wait until the bow bounces to go into the non-volley zone to get it. In fact, oftentimes if you're making this mistake, if you've trained yourself to do this, if you're making this mistake, chances are you're hurting your game. How could it be hurting your game? Well, uh, if you've trained yourself to do this and you're staying out of the NVZ until the ball actually bounces and you play against a good dinker. Go ahead, Lori, let's dink. You play against a good dinker like Lori and now she's gonna drop one in pretty close to the net and I wait for it to bounce. I am going to be stressed for time to be able to get that ball. In fact, I might not even be able to get the ball if it's really close to the net and I'm waiting for the ball to bounce. So that is misconception and a plain, not true number one. You do not have to wait for the ball to bounce before you go into the non-volley zone. Number two, we hear this all the time. In fact, this is the reason that the Better Pickleball channel started. We hear run to the non-volley zone as fast as you can. Now, in fairness, this one is 50% true because it's true on one side and it's not true on the other side. So if Lori and I are partners and we are on the return side, so the serve is on the side where the camera is right now, and Lori's my partner, I am the returner, by virtue of the two bounce rule, I have got to let that ball bounce. I have to hit the ground stroke, okay? So I've got to, to let the ball bounce and I have to hit the ground stroke. When I am on the return side, yes, it's true. I want to, after I've hit my ground stroke, run up here as fast as I can and join my partner at the non-volley zone. But it is not true on the serve side. So Lori and I are gonna go back and we are now the serve team. So uh, the side that the camera is on is the return side. So. If we're here and the, the, the return is coming to Lori and I just blindly run up and you see this all the time, she gets ready to hit the shot and I blindly run up here to the non-volley zone and she hits that ball a little too deep. 
So it's about this point on our opponent's paddle, I'm gonna get slammed with the ball. That's not only not fun, I, we always joke, I don't like eating plastic, not only is it not fun, but you're gonna lose the point and it's completely the wrong strategy. So it depends, this run to the non-volley zone as fast as you can, depends on what side of the ball you're on. Are you the return side? Then yes, it's correct. Are you the serve side? Then absolutely not. You need to negotiate this 15 feet, and we call it the hardest 15 feet in pickleball. Um, we're not gonna talk about it in this video, but we have another video. Uh, you can click on that link that will help you to learn to negotiate when you're the serve side. But what you need to do is think return side, that's good advice, serve side, it's not true. Stamp out that myth. Number three is if you have a weak backhand, just simply run around it. That is bad advice that could be hurting your game. Fact of the matter is, we all have one side that's gonna be stronger than the other. Some of us, it's our forehand. For some of us, it's our backhand. Most people, the backhand is weaker than the forehand. And while you might have the temptation to run around it, it's not good advice. It's just untrue for a variety of reasons. The very first one is, is this, is I, in just a second, I'm gonna have Lori feed me a ball and I'm gonna have her feed it to my backhand side. What you're gonna notice is that when I run around that shot, I pull myself out of position on the court. So go ahead, Lori, feed me a ball over on this side. And when I run around it, I put myself out of position and I put a lot of stress on my stroke to execute a good shot. So I'm out of position, I'm putting stress on myself. Those are two things. The third thing is this, is at some point in time, you're gonna have to learn how to use your backhand. So you might as well start using it right away. And an easy way to think of it, an easy way to get in the habit of using your backhand is this, is think of the paddle as having two sides. And we're actually gonna color those sides. So I'm gonna call my forehand side green, and I'm gonna call my backhand side blue. So anytime a ball comes to this side of my body, I wanna hit it with the green side of the paddle. Anytime the ball comes to this side of my body, I'm gonna hit it with the blue blue side of the paddle. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Lori feed me first a ball to the green side of the paddle, and then I'm gonna have her feed me the next ball to the blue side of the paddle. So I get used to it. So go ahead, Lori, feed me first to the green side. Nice, and now to the blue side of the paddle. Awesome. So think of one side of one color and one side as the other color. Now these are just three reasons that you don't want to listen to all the advice that you get on the courts. No matter how good you think that player may be, what they're telling you might be wrong. I'm curious, what was the worst piece of advice you got that you know now is not true? Put it down in the comments below because together we can train smart, live bold, and age well.